Hi there and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name is Adrian and today we're going to look at this HYC 1600E electric chainsaw. So I'm going to open the packaging, lay the contents out on the table so you can see exactly what you get. So I've laid the contents out but I will draw your attention to this on the top of the box and it says that the chainsaw safety kit must be worn when using this equipment and only to be used by trained experienced operators so just take note of that okay i'll put the box to one side and we'll work through the contents so first of all we have the chainsaw unit itself with its power lead we have the chain bar we have this bag which has the chain in it i will be wearing gloves when handling the chain we have a comprehensive user manual here. Now I do recommend that you read the user manual before use. And then we have the chain cover. And that's the contents of your packaging. So we're going to move forward with the assembly of the chainsaw. I'll just put these units to one side temporarily. And we'll start with the chainsaw itself. So to fit the bar and chain is the first thing we're going to do. So as you can see, this is the chain cover here. If I rotate this knob anti-clockwise, I can remove the chain cover completely. So the bar will be fitting on this area here, as you can see, sorry, in this location. So with the bolt sticking through this longer of the two elongated slots. So I'm gonna put the machine up on its side and we're going to fit the chain. So I'm going to try and explain this to make it simple, but it's very important that the chain goes on the right way round. Um, yes, it's a circle, but if it were, let's say, that way round on the chain bar, it wouldn't be correct. If it's on this way round, it would. Now I'm gonna explain the difference between the two. So you'll see the silver colored teeth have a large portion to the left towards the saw, and we'll call this the top of the saw. So if I put the chain bar in there, that would be the correct way round for the chain to fit. So there is a little drawing on the end here. I'll give you a zoom in on that, but you'll be able to see if you've got it right, because that little picture, the black picture, will match up with the shape of the tooth. So I'll bring you in and show you that. So as you see, the little black picture there shows a small piece to there and the larger piece to this side, which is exactly what that silver link shows. So that would be the correct way around for the chain on the bar. So I'll just put the chain into the bar and as you can see, I'm wearing gloves. And then we can head back to the saw and fit the bar and chain as one. So here's a little general view of what we're trying to achieve. The chain is in the groove all the way around the saw. I'll just lift it back off again. And I've looped, you'll see the little teeth here will drop into the grooves quite neatly in the driver gear here. So you'll find once you've got that in, it will just sit there. So I'll just give you a close up of how it is supposed to sit. So as you can see here, the little internal teeth on the saw are sat in the grooves correctly. So that is now fitted in there loosely. So the next thing we can do is refit the cover. So with the bar and chain approximately in place, as you can see, I'm just gonna replace the cover back into its location and just begin to screw it into place. We don't want it tight at this stage. I just want it to be loosely in position, just until you feel that slight resistance. So as you can see here at the moment, I've got the end of the bar and chain resting on this piece of wood. And the reason for that is that there is a little bit of play in there, and we'd like the play to be in the upwards direction. So the chain is very loose at the moment, but using the self-tensioner, I'll start winding up and you can see the chain jump up into the groove. Okay, now I'm gonna keep turning. Okay. Now, my chain tension there is about right. I can lift it out of the groove and it snaps back in and I have tightened up that hand wheel. So that is now set. So the chain and bar are on there in position and pushed upwards because I've got it balancing and holding the whole weight on this block of wood. So that's how simple it is to fit the chain and bar. But again, pay particular attention to which way round the chain is. 
So just a little tip, when you first start using your chainsaw, this chain will stretch, it'll do an initial st stretch and it will become slack. So keep a close eye on that. If it should become slack, the method to retension it is to completely undo all the tension of it, okay, so that it's free, as you can see, and then do it again. Screw this lever up and keep going until it's tight. There we are, and it will actually stop when it's tight. So that will retension it. You won't be able to retension it just by tightening this up. You have to undo it completely to slacken it off and then re-tighten it. And that's how you can retension the chain. So that's just a handy little tip to deal with the initial stretch. But do keep close eye on the chain when you're using it at first because that chain will stretch during its initial, probably initial 15 minutes of use. You may have to retension it a couple of times until it's bedded in and then it should be good for multiple occasions before you need to retension it. So we're happy now that the chain is fitted correctly, tensioned correctly, and I'm just going to put the cover on. There we go. Sliding it home completely to keep myself and other people safe from those sharp teeth. So the next part of the setup would be to add chain oil to the reservoir in the back here. So you simply anti-clockwise unscrew the knob here and add chain lubricating oil. Now this isn't engine oil, any normal oil, it's chain lubricating oil, it's much thicker. If you use a general purpose motor oil or something like that, it will be very messy and a lot of oil will come out because it's too runny. Proper chain lubricating oil in there and you'll see there's a sight glass on the side which will show you how much oil is left in the tank. So I haven't got my machine plugged in yet, I'm still going through the procedures. So you'll notice that the trigger does not pull. If you push the button, the trigger can be pulled. Okay, so it's an interlock on there, you need to push the button, pull the trigger. That's to switch it on. Second thing, we'll go on to the chain brake next. So this lever here is very important. This is the chain brake or emergency stop. So when this handle is forward, the motor will not run. It's a safety feature. When you pull this back, it will run. If you get a kick back with a saw and it jams in a piece of wood, it's going to throw the saw up against your wrist and you're going to automatically switch it off. So to start the machine, you need to pull the lever back. That will enable the trigger to be able to start the machine. So part of the pre-use checks for this machine is that when that lever is forward, we need to pull the trigger. Now it's all plugged in the mains and switched on, but nothing happens. So we know that the interlock is working correctly. If we pull that back, the light comes on, that's good. Now when I pull the trigger, the chain should run. I'm just going to do it for a moment. Okay, now I'm going to do it again and I'm going to put the brake on and make sure it stops. Okay, so that's my pre-use checks and I know that everything's safe. Now,